Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is the B-Ball Jones podcast coming back again one more week. Got a brand new special episode coming out for you. So, Nelson, you good? Yes, sir. How about yourself? I'm amazing, man, because we have a very special guest with us today. And Mr. Theo Radliff, how you doing, sir? Yeah, doing great, man. Doing great. Good good to see Nelson, man. I hadn't seen him in, a, in, a, in a, quite a little some time since, you know, we usually had a basketball camp and everything. He participated in a basketball camp down in uh, Demopolis. So good to see him. Glad to see he doing something with his life and, you know, trying to trying to be productive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, appreciate we talking, that. We were talking about this for a while, man. We were talking about getting guests on. And it made sense for, to have you as our first guest, because we talked about uh, you in our very first episode when we talked about Nelson and his background okay. and how uh, he got into basketball and how you two guys got connected. So can you speak on that real quick, sir? Yeah, well, I mean, our, our families go back from the early 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my grandmother lived, you know, just right across the street from, from his great-grandmother, father, grandfather, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how many people live though, over there in that area because I had two areas, you know, yeah. right there across the street. So uh, just, you know, a long history of family, friends, uh, you know, mother's classmates, uh, uncle's classmates. I mean, if you go down the line, it's just, a, you know, a whole family tree of, um, of my family, his family, you know, interacting with each other just throughout the number of years. Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I get who's who your mother is um, out of that family tree. Uh, My mom is Audrey Haskin. Audrey, okay. Audrey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so just, I mean, how many, how many uh, nieces? And, I mean, uh, uncles and aunts did you have? Uh, it's my. You probably know my dad, and then my my aunt uh, Needle and my aunt Connie. Those yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of was the was the superstar. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you, so you know, Arcani, for sure. But Man, uh, that, oh, sorry, but go just ahead. the history, just the history of, you know, like I said, growing growing up in a small town like Demopolis, you know, we we do what we call sitting on the front porch. <laughs> yeah, so so we. You sit on the front porch, especially you know with the older with the older adults. You know that was always the thing because um, a lot of times you know back then you know what the air condition wasn't wasn't a real thing. <laughs> and you kept your doors open. You sat on the front porch and, and you you know you, you you tried to you know catch a breeze every now and then in a hundred degree weather. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but but this um I mean the family tree you know you just took me back you know when you called me. And asked me to speak on it. Just took me back from from when your grandfather and my grandmother, when they were, you know, in their shoot, probably like the age I am now, mm. you know, um, back in the day when 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 they were vibrant and they were still moving around in their fifties and sixties, um, and all the way up until, like I said, my 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 grandmother passed at eighty five. And and then with your grandfather, you know, with them, they were interacting because they became companions with each other. Just you know, coming, just sitting and, and talking with each other and, and hanging about. And and during that time, you know, I would I would go over there and I was taking care of my grandmother, staying with my grandmother, and and so I had to you know the chance to be able to sit down and, and actually talk with your grandfather and 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 have that whole that elder interaction that a lot of people don't get nowadays, um, you know, with, as, as their grandparents become older. Uh, but, but it was, uh, yeah, it definitely took me, took me back, man. I, like I said, just the, the whole family, you know, just the whole synergy of, of, of being in one area for that long, which I still have my grandmother's house. Uh, and you guys are still <laughs> right across. The right street, in there. <laughs> so, so uh, nothing's changed, and you know. And every time you know we go back, you know, I make sure, you know, we we say our hellos and and, and give out the the activity shirts for the camp and different things of that nature too. Some of the some of the people in the area, uh, 
because you guys are always uh, high on that list, you know. And, and then, um, you know, you got uncle that actually played overseas and, 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 mm -hmm. and uh, Johnny Ray. And, and he played with my uncles in high school. The, so the, just my like uncle Johnny Ray was supposed to be tough. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so just the whole synergy piece around, you know, just um, the families, you know, um, just interacting throughout the years with my uncles that were, you know, grew up right across the street from your uncles and going to U.S. Jones High School at the time, you know, where it's where my uncles and my aunts and now it's the elementary school. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it's, you know, just a, a, a plethora of memories and then to come to you, <laughs> to, to come to you to come up there at my camp and see, you know, see you and see the kids from Joseph and our, our, us, Joseph and I were, you know, we, we were one year apart. I was one year older than him. Okay. And, um, you know, getting to know him and him playing football and being in the school with them together. So, so like I said, just the whole different family trees Throughout the years, man, it was just so long, and the lineage is just so long. Um, you know that, like I say, I could, I guess we're gonna own it for hours, just on just that alone. But, but then, like I said, then coming in, you know, to doing the camps, I do my do my camps every year. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do them this year with the COVID and stuff. But been doing my camps for shit, I'm mean, 20 years, so. <laughs> so so seeing you from the pup. All the way coming up and going through high school and everything, and, and so it's just like I said, it's just so real when you start looking back and you really start thinking about it and talking about uh, some of the life that you had, you know, while you were there, um, and how things have progressed and the kids are now older and and now they're grown and now it's the grandkids. <laughs> you know what I mean? So 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 it, it, it's just uh, super cool, but. Um, but that's, you know, that, that's what I, I get out of that, man. Just a, a lot of love from both, both families, from both sides. And, and I know you got a, a uncle that was, uh, is a great writer, mm -hmm. wrote several books and, and got, uh, nationally recognized for some of his books and things of that nature. So highly educated family. I think everybody was a professor. <laughs> 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 so, so yeah, you know, just super smart. I, I always remember them just, just always being super smart and and always going to that next level of education, um, and always been been a big part of, like I said, a big influence to to my family, my mother, and and how she wanted to raise us to make sure we um, continued our education and and excel in life. Man, I, I just man, you you don't know like how, how crazy it is to hear somebody else like speak well about my family like that. Cause you know when right. when, when you in the family, it's like we yeah. only we you hearing them talk about themselves and like exactly and, like exactly. it's kind of, as a kid you kind of just be like ah uh, you know he probably just you know exaggerating or you know I'm tired of hearing about that stuff right. like that. But like to hear somebody else speak on it is like it's cool. Cause now it's like. Dang, maybe maybe he was all he said he was. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, oh for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they, they were man. Real, real deal, man. Yeah, like my great, dad great, used man. to tell me, my dad used to tell me about like knowing you and stuff like that. And it was like, yeah, me and Theo, we came up in the same neighborhood and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, I, part of me was like, did you did you grow up in the same neighborhood or y'all just both from the office? You know what no, I'm saying? Man, right across the street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right across yeah. the street. I mean, so cool. playing baseball in the, in the, in the uh, church parking lot. Things <laughs> like that. Behind man, y'all go way back, man. You know what I mean? You know, behind the school basketball, right where the, where the activity center is now. That's where we And that little playing. concrete court. Yeah, we had the asphalt, you know, <laughs> every day going out there. Yep. Y'all got to be from the mafia. That was our activity center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being on that court, man, that's that's it, man. And then I, I gotta I gotta put the picture. In. I still got that. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I got an uh, old picture of when I was at one of your camps. I may have been like I don't, I don't even know how old I was. I had to have been like maybe nine, ten years old, right? And, right. and I had I had the little trophy, and uh, we, it was in the newspaper down there. 
it was like me, my other my other teammate Malik. Yeah. Uh, we was all in it, like just to let we gonna put it in the, in the YouTube video just so people know how far back we really go. Like, oh yeah, for sure. I, I've been coming for to sure. the camp like all my life. I so. know, I know. Like I gonna say, shoot, I done had it all your life. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so like yeah. I remember, I remember, um, like as I got older, you know, you, when you kid, you know, I was just a kid coming to the camp like everybody else. But then as I got older, and then I started being like part of the middle school group, yeah. and then got on into the high school group. That went that when you you started being like, cause you've known me and my family the whole time. But that when you started right. being like, so so man, what, what grade you in now? And I'd be right. like, I'm oh, I'm in ninth grade. Oh, so you you, you play varsity? I'd be like, yeah, I play varsity. All right, you yeah. doing good next year. Uh, hey man, what grade you in now? Right, oh, I'm in tenth right. grade. Oh, you got any colleges looking at you? Oh, right. I talked to so and so and so and so. All right, good. Then <laughs> next year is yeah, the yeah. same thing. Exactly. And so, exactly. like that, just that's just to let people know, like we we kind of been. We we'd have been uh, interacting and knowing each other for a long time. I didn't realize, you know, your family knew my whole family oh, like man. you did. Yeah. But yeah. It's, like I, I just want the people to know. Yep, all good. All right, so let's let's get into a little bit more about uh about young Theo. So what was it like growing up in the Mopolis? Like I, I know a little bit about that, but you know, the people don't. So what's what's it like growing up in the Mopolis and then going to the Mopolis High School and all that? Well, I mean, you know, uh, anytime you're from a small country town in Alabama, um, not a whole whole lot going on. We entertain ourselves, man. You know, and and I think, you know, basketball became my entertainment, you know, of choice. Um, you know, early on, but you know, but early early on, you know, we we did the marbles, we did the, you know, running through the woods. <laughs> I mean, playing playing football in the backyard, baseball, different things, things of that nature that we just, as kids, always wanted to be outside. Uh, we had to be outside, really. But they had no choice. No, nah, <laughs> grandma, mom, they, they didn't play, you know, you stand in the house. Whereas so opposite now with kids, with, with the invention of the, the video games and everything, um, kids sit all the time playing video games, but... Um, like I say, I'm a big proponent of, of kids being outside. One, you know, you're outside in nature in the sun, uh, getting fresh air, and you're not just sitting in there looking at a screen, blinding yourself <laughs> with, <laughs> with a video game for uh, 20 hours a day. Um, so, so yeah, so that's that was, you know, kind of where, where we were. We all, all were outside. So everybody knew everybody. And, and like I said, when you start seeing kids, there was no neighborhood you would go into where it wasn't kids outside, you know? And, and it, like I said, it's just so different today because, uh, you know, especially with, even with sports, with, with basketball, baseball, you have so many organizations and organized sports. People don't really play in the parks. And stuff like we used to do, play in the parks, go to different people's neighborhoods and play. Uh, you don't see any of that stuff uh, on a consistent basis nowadays. Um, you know, most of the places I ride around now, everybody's inside. Or if you ride, there's nobody riding bikes. I mean, we rode bikes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that was just our, you know, our thing. But um, I think we would, I was more of a, um, I would say I was an introverted, introverted uh, kid. Um, I didn't, I didn't talk a whole lot. I didn't, you know, unless I was amongst, you know, some of my my family, friends, or whatnot. Then, you know, we tend to talk a little bit more. But always very observant of what was going on, and and always took in a lot and listened to a lot. Especially, you know, being around older people, listen all the time. Shut your mouth, you listen. <laughs> so. So definitely learn how to listen, listen well uh, to uh, with different people, and it you know carried over into my you know into my life and into my career as well. Uh, but I remember uh, what well, it was probably my sixth grade year. You know, I was a big, big. Everybody's a big fan of, of football in Alabama, so we all played football, played little leagues and, and, and baseball. And I remember baseball. I was. Uh, Playing with the team, I had to be like eight, nine, or something like that, trying out for a team, and, and end up getting cut. 
And, you know, I thought that was the worst thing in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I became the ball boy. Because I, yeah, I couldn't play no way. So I <laughs> been the bat boy. <laughs> so so um, doing that. And then I think what my uh, sixth grade year was when we were all play tackle football. I don't know what we called it. We would just throw the ball up in the air. Whoever got it got tackled. And <laughs> we would do that in school and at PE. And I think somebody ended up getting hurt. And they said, no more tackle football, no more, you know. So we're like, man, man we, we can't tackle. So we're going, I'm going to play basketball. So that's kind of how I got into really, really playing basketball because once they took that tackle football away, I was like, I'm going to the court. Everybody went to the court. And so we just started playing basketball consistently you know, on that very black asphalt. On, on that very uh, uh, black top back behind the school um, for recess. And we did that. And once I did that, you know, it was like it was love at first sight. You know, um, I started to enjoy it. Couldn't play. It was horrible. Uh, you was bad. Was really, uh, <laughs> I was bad. Bad wheels, everything was bad. <laughs> so, so, you know, just start getting that basketball in my hand and um, and started just, you know, playing. And, and like I say, growing up between my grandmother's house and then growing up in the projects, we always was doing something in the backyard. So we basically made our own hoop. We made, put the tie rim up, tie some nets on to it, <laughs> cut down no, the land the trees, and <laughs> stuck a backboard, a plywood backboard up. Y'all <laughs> took, y'all tied on the tire? Like y'all empty tire? Uh, on the tire rim, was the bro, yeah. On, not, that is on crazy. The, on the, uh, yeah, not the, not the, not the big wheel. Not the big uh, 10 speed, he had the, you know, the BMX wheel. So that, yeah, we made a go. I mean, we was gonna make us, we made a go. That's <laughs> crazy. Man, I remember being out there, because that was before I could go and just, uh, you know, on my own, go and walk to behind the school and go play. You know, my mom, you know, she's like, no, y'all, you ain't going nowhere, you, you know, 10, 11, 10, 11, 12 years old, you're not you're gonna be walking around in the streets. Mm. So one, there wasn't no hoop. So we we used to have major games back there. Hills, there's a big hill going down into a hill. With it. I mean, we had clubhouses, so all the nails and shit was all over the place. Every time we bring a new ball back there, bust the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and, 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 and we used to play with a flat ball because every, every time you bring a new ball, you're like, oh, that's my last. You try to clean all the nails and stuff up, but it might last maybe a day or two <laughs> before we go in there to <laughs> go into a nail and bust. So we just would play with a flat ball. That's and, oh my and, goodness. You know, playing with a flat ball and you know, on a hill, and we didn't try to clear out, try to make it like a, a, a court. Um, I, I can't even imagine, I don't even know how. I mean, the area was so small that we were playing in. When I think about it, and I, I'm like, that was crazy. <laughs> I mean, we Sound had crazy. real full pair games out uh, there with a flat bat, with a flat basketball, patting the ball like we dribbling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Shooting goodness. The top of it. You know what I mean? So, but so but them, them days probably made you what you are now, though, yeah, like, yeah. unknowingly. I mean, everybody was out there doing it, but, you know, it just it just, it just just made me more so itchy than anything to get to a real basketball court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can see it. After, after doing that for a number of years and, 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 and rarely getting to go over, you know, and play with the older kids, on the on the court when I was younger, um, I think she started letting me go do that. Um, probably around my seventh grade, seventh grade year. You know, because uh, just even even going back to that, you know, I, um, I 
think it was six sixth grade. I tried out for the uh, for the uh, middle school team and got cut because I really wasn't good enough. I couldn't play. Like I said, I couldn't walk and chew, duck, chew gum at the same time. So, <laughs> so they called me fumbly bumbly. Like your hands bad, catch <laughs> the ball. <laughs> they even call me that in uh, football. <laughs> Miss, missing passes. <laughs> Man. Uh, so so um, so once I got cut, I was like, man, I gotta go. I just gotta go to work, and I just kept a ball basketball. I dribbled the ball everywhere I went. I always had my ball with me, you know, just all the time. You never would see me without my basketball dribbling, just doing stuff, you know, in the projects, in the in the in the uh, on the walkway. Just dribbling the ball, just constantly having the ball. And as I uh, that following year, I got better because I started playing with the older kids, you know, um, and, and adults, you know. So it wasn't no AU and you know you playing with your peers all the time. When you went to go play, you had you had to pick up. You know what I mean, you had to pick. You you had down. So if, if you you get off the court, you lose, then these grown right. men getting all work coming to get exercise. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you might not get back on. <laughs> quick. <laughs> you gotta, you know, have a certain mindset to play with these guys. Cause like I said, they out here, you know, they cursing, they I mean, it's just they they serious. Mm. And so I would spend a lot of my time on the other side where what where they weren't playing, playing on the lesser court with some of the other guys that didn't get picked. Um, and just just kept getting getting better, kept on in my skills. And um, you know, it was every day. You know, it was it was no time, no time in the summer where you wouldn't find me on that basketball court. And I would find myself out there by myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a hundred degrees. In the middle of the day, I ain't care. I was like, man, I'm. I just like, I want to be out here. I'm just, you know, trying to get better. I'm getting better. Man. I'm gonna get ready. I'm getting ready for next. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get ready because I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be dominant in this because I, you know, kept getting taller and taller, and you know, skills kept getting better. And I remember uh, distinctly, you know, watching, you know, Magic. And those guys talk about their careers and how they played when they were younger. It, it didn't matter. They were, they were playing in the snow. They moved and the, shoveled the snow out the way and to go out and play basketball. And it was like nothing could stop them. And I'm like, yeah, I, I like that. I'm, that's my attitude. I don't want to be sitting around doing nothing anyway. So let me go and just, just put this work in. Yeah. And so I just started – you know, watching film, recording, uh, as I got, you know, through through middle school and into high school, just recording, because uh, we had the VHS then, so recording uh, the different games that would come on, because it was only like those Sunday, Saturday games that came on TV um, back then. And it was going to either be the Lakers or the Celtics or, you know, somebody, Pistons, so, you know, it was going to be one of the top teams that they were going to play either that Saturday or Sunday. And I would record those guys and record uh, uh, Houston, watch a King, watch uh, David Robinson, and watch all, all those guys. And then I would go out and I would ch- just try to emulate some of the things that they did on the floor, you know, and, and just watch them and go mimic their moves and make them my move. And that's how I kind of ended up excelling myself uh, because I didn't, there were no trainers. You know, uh, you learn the fundamentals. You was going to get the fundamentals uh, in middle school. That's something that uh, uh, Coach Hallmark was a, a stickler of. Um, he was my, my junior high coach and also in my, uh, he ended up being my, my uh, high school coach the last two years. But, but he was a, a stickler on fundamental basketball. Everybody learned how to dribble. Everybody learned how to, you know, pivot, shoot, different things of that nature. Um, 
And, and one of the things he did say to me uh, back uh, probably was maybe my eighth grade, in eighth grade middle school year, everybody wanted to be the score, be Michael Jordan, but who's going to play defense? But what's going to separate you is the person that can play defense. And I took that to heart for real. <laughs> I mean, because I wanted to become the most dominant defensive player uh, on the floor. And that's what I became because I concentrated on it. And like I said, I studied those guys that were great defenders, that the uh, David Robinsons, the Akeem Olajuwon's, uh, Dennis Rodman, diff different guys. I studied those guys in order to help my game and understand how to play defense and, and, and what it means to play defense. So, so that, that kind of pushed me, you know, into not just, you know, throughout high school, but also into my college as well, uh, becoming a great defender. And um, I think um, in high school, um, uh, we did pretty well, went to state a few years. Um, but I always got knocked out, you know, by the bigger the bigger schools when we had to go up to Birmingham or Montgomery. Um, would, would be competitive, but they just had, you know, bigger, stronger football guys. <laughs> and we said, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, the biggest guy at uh, six, 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 five, six, six, uh, 150 pounds. <laughs> so, so it was uh it was tough sledding, but not, but like I said, I always was able to to be a big defender, you know, throughout uh, my career. But you know, those were some of the uh, great great days uh, of being able to being able to play in high school and and to just get better, you know, because it was all about how I'm gonna get better, how 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 can I, what I need to do, how much work I need to do in order to get myself to be better at what it is that I'm doing. You know, not even thinking about NBA or any of that stuff, but more so, how can I get better? I can get a scholarship to be able to go to go to college for free, and mom will have to pay that, and and get an opportunity to do that and play basketball in college because the NBA wasn't even on the radar. You always dream, you know, you always dream when you're younger. You dream and act like you you in the NBA, but you never. Um, that was so far fetched out there that it was like, I, I can't even really even kind of think about it like that. <laughs> I just gotta <laughs> get to this, get to this step. Okay, go through junior, junior high school, uh, become a starter, become dominant. Okay, now I gotta take the step back again. Now my sophomore year, I gotta try to get better try to try to uh, excel myself to be able to be ready well my, my, my freshman year try to excel myself to be ready to play uh, with with the high school kids and you know it's all steps and then you know being able to okay well now I can be a starter in high school okay now I can try to be one of the best players you know in on the team uh, in high school okay now I can try to be one of the best players in the city in the state or whatever. Um, and so it's, it's just all progression and then go on on to college, same thing. You know, it's always a, a, a start over point. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's always right. a, a start over point. You know, each, each, each jump, each leap is always a different a, a starting point each time. That's crazy. Like, it's really crazy to hear you, like, talk about some of this stuff because, like, like I remember, like, doing some of the same things like just being out just going to play like just going to work out stuff like that just, or going by myself being out there behind the theo when it wasn't open like yeah. stuff like that like it's crazy because like i feel like like we, we we just did so many of the same things had the same attitude about stuff and yeah. like i remember one time we had the um we had like some kind of church event we we it was one of those community community choir things we had um we had at the rattler center and okay. they said all right everybody be there at 11 and i was like okay cool i went at 10 and uh -huh. i was just on the court outside shooting and like doing doing my own stuff 
And then I remember the lady came, uh, the lady that was over, she came and uh, when I saw everybody pulling up, that when I went to the gym, she was like, I know that wasn't you out there shooting. And I said, yeah. yes, ma'am. She said, so you out there getting sweaty right before we got to come in here and sing? And I was <laughs> like, I was going, I said, I was going to go in the bathroom and like, like wipe <laughs> off and like, you know, real, right. But I, I mean, yeah, like I was just trying to push shots up. So, so like, but that was the attitude that I had. Like, yeah, like I was just trying to put the work in. I wanted to be better and get mm-hmm. somewhere every year. Like every year I'm trying to be on the level and on oh, a yeah. higher level than I was the oh, year yeah. before. I, I get it. See. Anything else? Is there anything else about your upbringing and your high school career that you want to throw in there? Do you have any records? Like, anything like that? Well, I'm sure I got plenty of records. <laughs> <laughs> in high school, I mean, yes. Um, you know, definitely, you know, like I said, highlight is is always, um, you know, have it, coming back and get my uh, jersey retired you know, at the school oh, yeah. um, was, you know, a big highlight, making a, uh, the, uh, like, I guess it was, what was it, Moppers Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, Marengo County. Um, yeah, Marengo Hall Hall County Hall of, Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame. That, that's you know, always, always uh, uh, great stuff to be, be recognized in. Um, but like I said, just more so anything was, you know, um, you know, your family and my family, you know, also were big components of uh, the church and, and religion and, and, and believing and having faith. And, you know, with, with, with the church being, you know, one right next door um, and, and across the street and, and down the street and everywhere, you know, that, that was, you know, and my mother working in, a, in the actual church center, working for the elderly. Um, programs and different things that make sure um, it, it always was about you know giving back to the community and that's you know that's I think where I, I got a lot of my um, my thought process you know even you know going throughout the NBA of, of being able to be a big component in where whatever community it was I, it was I was in to make an impact you know especially around kids and and, and having a uh, uh, ability to be able to, you know, provide, you know, just my knowledge and, you know, my experience to help the next person. And, you know, I think that's that's a big a big influence, you know, with, with our families. And um, I think that that's definitely was, you know, a, a, a sharp sticking point for, for a lot of the community uh, base in, a, in a democracy. Growing up in Demopolis, man, can you tell us at what point that it became more than just a dream and idea of playing in the NBA? Like, what at one point did you feel like you could even attain the idea of being an NBA player? Oh, no. Nah, it, <laughs> it, it, def- it definitely happened in Demopolis. Uh, like I said, when I, I went to, you know, I, I ended up, you know, being all state um, at the, my, my senior year and getting, you know, recognized in different areas. Um, and I think I, I got recognized to, to be able to even go to college. Um, I got recognized. I went to one basketball camp. That was the University of Alabama basketball camp in 11th grade. And I got recognized by those guys, by just going in there, doing, doing the things I do, blocking shots, running the floor, you know, showing my athleticism, but I was, like I said, I was probably six, five, uh, 150 pounds, you know, so I was skinny skin. And, but, you know, because of my ability to be able to block shots, run the floor, handle the ball, um, I got a lot of recognition, you know, there with a lot of the, uh, the college coaches, the assistant coaches helped with a lot of the camps. So I had Wyoming's coach, their head coach was a former assistant at University of Alabama. So he had a lot of his people come down to work the camps and, you know, along with, you know, some of the uh, Auburn, Montgomery, and, and some of these different different uh, assistant coaches to get a chance to see me play. So 
played, you know, played pretty well, enjoyed that tremendously. You know, like I said, my first camp, got invited to a lot of the ACDC, Adidas camps and all that, but they were asking for like $600 and I was broke. So <laughs> that wasn't going to work. <laughs> I wasn't going to make that trip. Um, and, 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 and then um, Wyoming, one of the assistants, you know, started recruiting Alabama was recruiting you know, a little bit. They weren't really you know, uh, trying to you know, pull me in. I was under 50 pounds, so that's not SEC type material. <laughs> so right. so uh, they started really recruiting me heavily. Um, you know, I, like I said, got on my first plane, went out there to visit um, for the first time, getting on an airplane. So that was a, quite an experience <laughs> as, as a junior. Um, and, um, you know, just, I fell in love with the country. It was, it was between, um, uh, Wyoming and, uh, Western Kentucky, which West, West Kentucky was a, a pretty good team at the time. They, they had just got an assistant, I think, from the New York Knicks. Um, and I think if, if I had a new, more about the game and, and, you know, the recruiting thing and, you know, network and all that, I probably would have went to West Kentucky <laughs> because, you know, they had the connection with the Knicks and they were, you know, they were actually in the Sweet 16 and, and all that stuff. So, but lo and, lo and behold, Lord took me out to, to Wyoming. Um, I loved it. Um, we had a lot of connection with Alabama guys that were out there. Um, so that was kind of, you know, once, once I committed, which, which, in which I committed my junior year, I committed early. I wanted to get it over with, sign early. Um, I didn't wait till my senior year. Um, so once I committed to them, Wyoming, I had, you know, all the Alabama, let's see, I had a whole bunch of different colleges start coming after me up uh, my senior year, you know, um, trying to get me to come to their school. But once I had committed, I committed. And I wasn't gonna go back on my commitment. Um, so that was, you know, very exciting. You know, knowing that I, you know, I, I made it to the point of now, I got a scholarship to University of Wyoming. Um, got to go, you know, thousands of miles away to Wyoming from Alabama in the freezing cold, which I've never been in. <laughs> so, 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 so that was. Um, <laughs> Definitely a, a, a crazy experience, but but I think that's that's kind of where I started. Like I said, when I talk about the steps, you take that next step. That was my next step, you know, in my maturation of becoming Theo, the, the basketball player and the man going to college, being on your own and different things that makes it so. Um, you know, was happy, was happy to do it, was ready to leave and, and embark on some new things and new in life um, and made that transition. You know, um, like I say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't the guy that was, you know, going to do the, the party thing. I wasn't drinking. I, I didn't do any of that stuff, you know, throughout high school. Um, so just always was just focused on trying to get to that next level. Uh, whatever that next level was, <laughs> and so so that's that's kind of where 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 it took me to on that on that Wyoming side. So once I got to Wyoming, like I said, start over, freshman, um, you know, just six, seven, one hundred and seventy pounds, you know, just small. You know, we had guys in there six, seven, two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> I mean, so. Um, just jumped in the weight room, full steam ahead, just and just built my built my body. Knew I had to just stay in the weight room and you know eating a whole lot. Um, and and what Wyoming was, Wyoming was you know, has a high altitude. You know, you heard about the mile high in Denver. That Wyoming was about two miles. So so <laughs> trying to breathe was 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 a challenge. You know, uh, uh, not at the time I was there. And the thin air just made me sick a lot too. So just, you know, battling through that and just trying to live a regular, healthy college life, um, 
and, and just hooping, man. And, and like I said, I did everything that I took from high school. I brought it to college where other guys were looking to go hang out and do what they were doing. I was in the gym. I was either at the multi-purpose center playing or I was going to the arena. You know, whether it was by myself or whether, you know, it was it was us playing as, you know, as a group. Uh, but I stayed, I kept myself in the gym. And, you know, and with that, you know, I developed, uh, also knew I had to, uh, to learn how to study uh, film and everything. And, and one of the great things that happened while I was there, you know, my first freshman year, played, played a little bit. I was, I, I was supposed to red shirt actually my first year, but we had, we had a few guys that like to partake in the extracurriculars and <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they ended up uh, not going to class and, you know, just hanging out a lot and doing, doing their thing. And we, maybe we had about three seniors that became ineligible to play that year. So, Thanks, uh, seniors. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so I got thrust into actually, you know, getting some playing time, which you know was wasn't a bad thing. Um, so I got I got thrust into getting some playing time, with which I, you know, I was I was playing against you know one of the top players in the in the uh, in the conference was on our team at the time by, uh, by the name of Reggie Slater. He was like I said six seven, two fifty all muscle, super athletic, and, you know, me, and I tell, tell him all the time, I said, man, you made me ready for the NBA because me at 170 trying to guard you, you know, in practice every day, I, I ain't had no choice but to become tough because, you yeah. know, he, he was huge running over me, and, you know, I just had to figure out how to be able to best to defend him, and, you know, my athleticism, my ability to be able to block shots still gave me that advantage to be able to, to, to hold my own against most of the guys that were bigger than me. So so that's kind of, you know, like I said, the defense, you know, having a defensive mindset going to always make you stand out, you know, amongst the crowd for people that don't uh, because they, they know you understand it. You, you're, you're in the right positions. Uh, 90% of the time and you're always thinking about helping your teammate and, and that's what that's what the, being a defender is about um, along with locking your man up um, but I think just just that that alone you know pushed me into growing up real quick because I thought I wasn't going to be playing I was just going to be practicing and just sitting out to now okay we throwing you into the fire. <laughs> so, okay, that's what we yeah, let's go, let's go get it. And, and that just helped me to understand the level that I needed to be at in order to be that next guy up. And so, you know, sophomore came around and you know, I, I started playing a, a little bit more. And, and then I got invited to um, USA, the USA team, in which I, um, USA tryouts, and that's when you know all the guys that you would see on TV, the tent, the uh, the McDicey, the I mean Grant Hill, I mean you you name it, all those guys that played in the NBA, um, they were there at the USA camp during that during that year. Um, I was in school, so all the teams you would watch play um, play on Saturday. Mm. You know, um, all those big colleges in North Carolina, Dukes, California, you know, Cal, UCLA, you know, all those guys from those teams were, were there for the tryouts. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm playing and, you know, and I'm, I'm just I'm just recognizing myself. I'm like, you know, people really don't have the mindset that I have about playing defense. Everybody's about, you know, their yeah. offense. So I'm like, you know, that's when the, the bell went off. And he asked me about, you know, when I th thought I would be able to possibly get to the NBA. That's when the bell went off for me. It was like, oh, shit, I, I got something that people don't do. This is a special. So I'm like, okay, I just got to keep on working, keep on getting stronger, keep on getting bigger. 
and I'll be able to, you know, put myself in a position to at least go pro, whether it's NBA, whatever round, whatever, it don't matter. Uh, I'll be able to do that. And, and that's kind of when I recognized that I could play with those same guys. I could have, you know, I could have easily been at one of those North Carolina Dukes or any of those schools and still been, you know, who I was as a player. Um, and holding my own against those top All-American guys. You know, that's when they were doing All-American teams every year, you know, um, and all those guys with McDonald guys, McDonald All-Americans and all that. So they were already pre-All-Americans pre -all for college, you know, all the years they were in school. So having a chance to be able to play against them and, and, and be able to do pretty well against them, I'm like, okay. I got a chance to play with these guys. These are the guys who are going to be next in the NBA. So I got a chance to be able to be next. Um, so so went back, whole different type of confidence. You know, come my junior year um, in college and just dominate. You know, dominate the league, um, especially on the defensive side, block and everything. Um, I became the the all-time leading shot blocker in the history of NCAA, uh, most shot blockers in one year. Um, and I don't know where I, where I end up in the NCAA. Uh, shit, I think like I think it was like one or two all-time on block shots, on the block shot. So that's when I kind of, you know, that buzz right here. I could definitely take this to a whole different level. And, um, you know, it, it just, Kind of excel from there. Uh, Top two, uh, or like in block shots, like and it, I don't know, man. I guess because I value defense, like I, I always been a shot blocker too. Yeah. So like yeah. it just hearing you say that, like, dang, you like in the issue. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But but moving on from that, uh, in two thousand five, you end up getting inducted into your college's Hall of Fame. Uh, so tell, can you tell us about that, like what that was like, and uh, how special that was for you? Well, I mean, that was that was very special, you know, especially you know having my mom and uh, family there, um, kids being able to see it. Um, that was, uh, you know, uh, really special, you know, to, to be inducted, you know, with some of the greats that that have played in Wyoming, uh, you know, in, in all sports. Um, you know, with the uh, Finnish Dembo and, you know, some of these Barry Legners, some of these guys that went on to go in, in the pro and have pretty significant years you know, in the NBA um, to be, you know, to be put in there. Um, like I said, it's always an honor to be honored um, and recognized. Um, and I think, you know, my, the Wyoming family, you know, is, is you know, 100% love, you know, all the time, you know, uh, when I go when I go there, um, so it was it was def definitely a big a big honor to be uh, be there for eternity. That's great, man. It's it's yeah. just cool to hear you say that. Yeah. But uh, all right, so moving on into into your. Uh, into your pro years, so you were the 18th pick to uh, Detroit Pistons. So can you just walk us through your whole draft process? What it felt like? Um, oh how, man, how, how did it Bro, feel you know, at the man, time? I, I told you, man, you, you, you know me about three, four hours. You keep trying to go through all this stuff here because <laughs> that draft process is a beast. Um, really. Yeah, man. I mean, I must have went to probably at least about ten different teams to workouts. Dang, you know, that's crazy. Um, and, and, and and one of the things, like once you know, I got out got out of college, right? The college, you know, um, making um, um, all conference teams and all that stuff, um, and all the accolades. I still at the end of the day was from Wyoming. Mm. So I wasn't high on anybody's draft list. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a first right. rounder on anybody's draft. So so 
And again, like I said, you have to just each process is a dip, is a is a start over point. So I knew, you know, when I had to go into these workouts, uh, you no, know, first before I even started going to the workouts, we they they had these these uh, these showcase games that they would have. Um, one was called the Portsmouth Invitation. I don't know if they're still doing that one. I think they didn't do it this year. And then you had the uh, Desert Classic. And then you had the, the combine they were doing in Chicago. So going to invite, getting invited to the Portsmouth, like I said, coming from a small school, it's mostly a lot of the, the smaller school guys, guys that are, you know, they may predict, may be drafted, may not be drafted um, to go to these these little all-star tournaments, so to speak. And like I said, you, you go show up and do what you do and show out and possibly push yourself up to be able to, to be moved up in the draft. So we did the Portsmouth first, you know, did well, played well. Um, but I think the feedback from, from the agent from from different teams, they didn't feel like I was in, in good enough shape. So we go in the lab, I go, you know, go to go to Arizona early, get a trainer, um, work hard, you know, getting ready for the next Desert Classic, which is coming up. So come back, boom, have a you know a great tournament. Great tournament at the Desert Classic. You know, saying the status is moving up a little bit. So you possibly second round pick. You know, got teams really, really interested in. So you end up after that, that's when you start doing the, uh, you, you go and you do your, your, your showcases for the different teams. They bring you in, you know, maybe one or two other guys there, maybe just you. So they put you through, uh, strenuous training, each, each team. Now. So <laughs> they put you in, they, they put you through running drills, they put you through shooting drills. Uh, some of them even had to play against, you know, other guys. Um, but they really, you know, evaluate you. And then all of them do uh, not just, you know, basketball, but mental evaluations and everything else. Um, to make sure, you know, you ain't, you ain't crazy. But, uh, <laughs> but but put you through some, you know, strenuous deals. I went to, uh, where did I go to? I went to, I went to Seattle. Seattle was tough. They, they had, a, uh, you know, Sean Kemp and all those guys at the time. And um, they put, put you through a, a pretty tough, strenuous workout. Um, I went to Chicago. Um, they had a, a pretty tough workout. Uh, Ryan, Ryan uh, was there. Jerry Krause was at the gym. He was he was pretty tough. And that's when you know they had to, you know that was Mike, Mike and all them doing. Yeah. So yeah. So that that was that was crazy. And then, um, just another team. The Bull. Um, I said the Bulls. Uh, the Pistons. Um, I think I did it in Atlanta. But just a, just a number of, of different teams. And, you know, one of the things you have to be, you know, just mentally strong, mentally tough when you're going to workouts and not, not let yourself, when you're missing shots and stuff, get frustrated, or, or, you know, and, and just continue to just show your work. They, I mean, they've already know what you do. They just want to, you know, put you through some drills to see, you know, how you react to stuff and, and, and you know, what you do, how you, when you fight through, give up or whatever. So, so that was, that was pretty good. And then after, after that, we, we end up doing the, we do the combine and the combine, you know, this is when everybody's supposed to come every, where well, everybody comes that's, that's, that's predicted to be in the draft, right? Mm. So you got, you know, all these guys here, we do the physicals and everything and they check everything out, make sure all, everything's all good. And 
you know, for some of the guys who decide to play, they have, you know, they have these different games set up, you know, showcase games for all the NBA scouts, all the NBA teams, um, head coaches, you know, everybody just in the building. So, so, of course, you know, some of the other guys, a lot of them, they were, you know, supposed to be projected to be in the first round at certain levels. And so they decided they wasn't playing. So I'm like, okay, shit, they, they, see, they still have for the show, show up and show out. So I can move myself up. And so I'm like, okay, good. They, they don't want to play. They don't want to. They, they feel like they got it on lock. I'm like, okay, that's all good. So boom, I play, play well. Um, you know, getting a lot of buzz. You know about you know how I played and stuff. You know through my agent, and even then, you know the night of the draft. I still didn't know where I was going to go. I mean, they had me projected from, um, I didn't know if it would be, you know, closer, more closer to the, to the, to the end of the draft or um, uh, second round. I didn't know. And shit, I would, when I interviewed with the Bulls, I know the Bulls had, very high interest because you know they had a hard grant type guy. They, they saw me as one of those, one of a type of guy as a hard grant type uh, player, mm. and they they were very interested. Um, and I was like, I can get the Bulls. That would be true. But at the time, you don't, you don't even really think about that. You just, yeah, you don't care where you go. You just you, yeah. go you just want to be drafted. Just, like that's your life. You want to be drafted in the NBA. But um, like I said, hindsight twenty twenty. We went for that Bulls move a little bit more. <laughs> Man, uh, could have had your ring out the gate. <laughs> Man, no, would have been there with with MJ now with, with the uh. boys. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, because I think they had the twenty six pick or something like that, and um, and so you know. I did the draft party. I didn't even go to the draft, in which they invited me to come up to. But I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. I'm not going to be sitting out there in that audience looking crazy. <laughs> I was like, nope. I don't do this at the crib. Oh, man. Damn. So did you watch it with, like, your family and stuff? Like, at yeah, your house? Or we did you it right at, uh, at the uh, Holiday Inn in the Poplar. So we did it right there. Um, in the little little small conference room, we you know, rented the little conference room, and you know I'm, I'm in there, and we in there, right? We watching the draft, and they going through it. They go through the top ten, and those guys came through, like uh, I think it was Joe Smith and she was the Stack House and Kevin Garnett, and Dice, and all those guys came through uh, early rounds, and. And then, you know, I know the panel, like, every time they're about to draft somebody, they start talking about it. Before they draft it, they start, you know, mentioning, you know, what who they is, what they did, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they got through, you know, with the 17th pick. Um, oh, no. no. Shit, what did I get drafted? 15. What did I get drafted? 16 or 18? Uh, 18. 18, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when they got through with the uh, 17 pick, they um, all of a sudden they started mentioning my name. I'm like, oh, 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 wait up. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like me. <laughs> you know, I'm, just, I'm like, oh, shit. They, they done called my name. Oh, shit. It might be something good about to happen. So we, you know, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, that ain't talking about me. It's that ain't talking about me with the pistol. Pistols up next, 18 pick. I was like, oh man, oh, hold on. It's like we about to go down. So, you know, phone call at the hotel. It's uh it's uh um Bill Collins, who was the head coach. Mm-hmm. He was like, where's my agent first? He called and he was like, yeah, uh, got somebody want to speak to you on the phone. 
So Doug Collins get on the phone. He like, we about to draft you with the 18th pick. You know, how you feel? I say, oh, what's going on? We screaming. They, they come up on the TV. Everybody screaming. Like, man, what's going on? Oh, this is, you know, like a dream come true. You know, it, it was a shoot. It was so many, much excitement, man. It was almost a blur after that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when it, after that, after that, <laughs> this is the rest of the picks. <laughs> the rest of the picks. I know, we were yelling and screaming and, and going crazy. You know, it's like, oh, man. And, and like I said, and it was like, yeah, we want you, we want you on the plane uh, tomorrow morning. Come up, man. I'm like, man, this is crazy. And you know, like I said, just our, our dream come true to be in that position to to go through and and do and and, and work and do all the work you do to be that guy. You know, eighteen mm. in the world. Yeah, that's, you know, it's that's humbling that's experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, so it was after I got all the blessings and, you know, and Hail Marys and everything from the fam, from, from the mom, grandma, and everybody, you know, and I think that was the more more exciting things just to see, you know, the excitement on their face, faces. And, and like I said, we ain't come from money. So, <laughs> you know, have an opportunity to take that next step to be able to, to secure, you know, um, run myself some finances um, to uh, help my, my, my mother, you know, who was still working and, you know, driving an hour a day to go to work and come back home. Um, and after she had been, you know, in, the, in doing her thing for so long, to be able to, to say, here you go, mom. Or, here you go, grandma. You know, to, to get them, you know, a house, to build a house for her and, you know, get my mom, mom's a house. I mean, it was, you know, you know, I, when you were able to do that, man, that's that's like super, super gratitude, you know, and homage you're paying to, you know, the people that brought you there. You know, of course, that yep. raised you there. So, so that 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 was, uh, you know, uh, a hell of an experience. You know, I must say. Yeah. Um, yep. The 18th pick. <laughs> 18th. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, 18th pick. I was like, but 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 like I said, all those guys that were supposed to be projected to go before me, uh, most of those guys didn't play in those tournaments. So like Jerry Stackhouse and them and uh, they told you. Well, I mean, those guys went before me, but a lot of those other guys that were that went under me. They didn't oh. play in those terms because they were so you 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 took somebody's spot raised. basically. So I pushed. I my my level got raised because of you know the them nice seeing point. me because like I said I still was from my own. They didn't know what I could do. Uh, you know they they just knew I I was doing it where I was doing it at, but they didn't know what I could do against you know that competition they see on you know on a regular basis. They weren't coming to Wyoming to see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I had to show up and do what I needed to do in order to put myself in a position to be the ex, be the accelerate. Man, that's that's special, man. Like to hear it, oh, yeah. <clears throat> like it, it's inspiring. For, like us to be from the same hometown and mm -hmm. to know you were drafted number eighteen. Because I, I, I don't think as a kid, as a kid, I don't think like I really realized like how special that was, like, that you was in the NBA and drafted 18th and stuff like that. I don't oh, yeah. think – I don't think my, me or my peers really realized what we – what like, what you had accomplished. No, no, like, no. And, 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 I, and like I said, it's, you know, a lot of a lot of kids and, you know, and I just – you know, like I said, I, I'm an observer. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I go around into these – these tournaments and – in all these different places, and they know I played, and they know I played in the NBA, but it's rare for people to even come up and really have a conversation, mm -hmm. which is 
mind blowing to me because I'm like, oh, doing what I'm trying to get to do. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to get to that level. But like, like you said, in hindsight, like, I would have asked you more questions. <laughs> it's rare, you know, even come and ask, ask it, your questions. So yeah. that's for any NBA guy. I don't want to be the last man on the bench. Yeah. In order, you, you got there out of everybody in the world. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of people. You know, the percentage is point zero 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 one chance of you getting there. I mean, the, the percentage is, is a whole lot less, I mean, less than a lottery, winning a lottery, you know, of a billion dollars. <laughs> so, so it's like, yeah. So that that's always kind of like, I don't get why, you know, kids, guys don't ask a lot of questions. You know, but, you know, people just be in their own, in their own world and not really cool. thinking on that level. But the ones that do, the ones that do, they always appreciate it, you know. Mm-hmm. They always appreciate the conversation because they get stuff that they're not going to get <laughs> from mm-hmm. people that have been there. So how you gonna hey, get, I appreciate it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? How you going to get the information? <laughs> but but uh, all good, all cool, for sure. Well, I appreciate it now. Just know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but, okay. Oh, so... So the, the like like you was pretty, the things we talking about like it's lasting a long time like right. I, I but, tell you, man, hey the, the stories go on man where I, I mean I played you know so many different places and it was always different experiences you know so, man I love every bit of the levels is, is different man oh man look we we had so much fun and enjoyed this interview and this podcast so much me and nelson was so excited to get to this interview and this is only part one that's the crazy part about this this is only part one of our theo ratliff interview it's so much that he gave us his story so interesting like me and nelson was just sponge just sitting there soaking up his information and his story so just to kind of recap we got a view of the connection of nelson and theo of how they met and how their families are intertwined we got a taste of young Theo and his life of growing up in Demopolis and his experience in high school. And we got a little bit into his college experience and uh, pretty much everything pre-NBA and how he got prepared for the draft and everything. So uh, the draft process was a crazy beast that he had to go through. And he told us about that story. So I hope you guys got a lot out of it. And I hope you enjoyed it. But just realize this is only part one. We have a whole other part coming up very soon. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to our uh, podcast make sure you uh, follow my youtube page just keep up to date uh follow us on any other uh, site that you get your podcast from uh follow us on social media at be ball jones follow nelson at nilla h34 on twitter nelson haskin on facebook make sure you follow our guest the nba former nba player theo ratliff has a twitter has facebook needs has instagram at shop blocker 42 shop blocker 42 it's theo rattler social media give him a follow uh dm him or comment on one of his posts and just say thank you for the podcast like show some love to him and his page because it means a lot for him to be our first guest as an nba player from my home state and from nelson's home city a small town in demopolis so really appreciate him coming on but it's only part one so make sure you stay tuned for part two and Keep on with the podcast, man. Thank you for listening. That's it. Have a good one.